Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 72. In this lesson, we're going to learn about common and natural logarithms. So far, when we dealt with logarithms, if we came across a logarithm with a base of 10, we listed the base of 10 just like we would for any other logarithm. But there's a shortcut involved when you see a logarithm with a base of 10. So a logarithm with a base of 10 is known to us as a common logarithm. This is because we have a base 10 number system. So when we encounter one of these guys, we don't actually have to list the base. So something like log base 10 of x could be written as just log of x, right? So the base here is understood to be 10. So if I saw something like log of 100, this is understood to have a base of 10. So this is really log base 10 of 100, and we all know this is 2, right? 10 to the second power would give me 100. Or if I saw something like log of, let's say, 30, we know this is log base 10 of 30. So if you're working with logs and you see log of some number and you're like, what is the base? Again, it's just understood to be 10. You've come across a common logarithm. Now, another important logarithm we're going to come across is known as the natural logarithm. So the natural logarithm obtained its name because of its place in biology and natural situations where growth or decay is involved. So the natural logarithm has a base of E. So if you see something like log base E of X, this base right here, this is what we're talking about. And E, this number, is approximately equal to 2.71. This E here is going to come up a lot, okay, when we're working with math moving forward. And just think of it as kind of another number that you're going to encounter like pi. It's this special irrational number. Again, after the 1 here, there's an infinite number of digits. There's no pattern to it. It just goes on and on and on. So when we see log base E of X, we can abbreviate this and just say this is the same as saying ln, which stands for the natural logarithm, of x. So if I see ln of 5, this is the same as saying we have log with a base of e of the number 5. Okay, th These two are the same. But typically you're going to see this written and not this written. Okay, So you'll just see ln of the number. All right, now let's talk a little bit about how we can use a calculator to either get an exact value or an approximate value for a logarithm. So the reason it's important to talk about the common logarithm and the natural logarithm these are the two buttons that are going to be available to you on most calculators. Now, there might be some calculators out there that allow you to change the base of a logarithm. The calculator I have, the calculator that most of you will have, gives you just an LN key for the natural log and gives you a log key, which is for a base 10 log or a common logarithm. So if you are in that situation like I am, you need to use a change of base rule in order to plug logarithms into the calculator and get either an exact value or in most cases an approximate value. So the change of base rule goes like this. For a greater than zero, a not equal to one, b is greater than zero, b not equal to one, and x is greater than zero, you have log base a of x. This is equal to log base b of x over log base b of a. So just notice that the base here and the base here is the same. So in most cases, we're just gonna use the common logarithm so if I had something like log base 2 of 10, and I wanted to change this to a common logarithm or a base 10 logarithm, I could just say, okay, well, this is log of 10 over log of 2, okay? And you could punch this into your calculator and get an approximate value. And if I went to three decimal places on this, I could say this is approximately equal to 3.32... It's 1 and then a 9, so the 9 allows me to take that 1 up to a 2, and then everything after that would be a 0 if I was rounding. So let's just say this is approximately 3.322. Okay, so knowing that, I couldn't have typed this into most calculators, but I can type this into most calculators, and I can get this. So that's where the change of base rule comes into play. Again, my base here and my base here are the same. I might as well have just wrote... This is base 10 and base 10. But again, if I just write log of something, I understand that the base is 10. So that's why I use that little shortcut. Then this guy right here came from this, okay? Again, just follow the pattern. This right here 
your argument in the logarithm is going to go as the argument in the logarithm in the numerator. Then this right here, the base, okay, the base is going to become the argument in the logarithm in the denominator. So just following that pattern, you can change the base and you'll be able to key that in to your calculator. And you'll get the same result if you use the natural log. So if I said ln of 10 over ln of 2, I would get approximately 3.322 as well. Okay, so same thing either way if you want to use the natural log or if you want to use the base 10 log or the common logarithm, it's going to be the same answer. All right, so now we want to use your calculator and the change of base rule to approximate each to three decimal places. All right, so we have log base 4 of 53. So I'm going to change the base to a base 10 log. And so I'm going to say this is log of this guy, 53, over log of this guy, which is 4. So what's that going to give me? It's approximately what? So my calculator, the readout gives me 2.86396022. If I want to approximate each to three decimal places, I'm looking at this guy right here. So here's where I would look and say, okay, well, the nine is in the category of five or greater. So I would round up, right? So this would turn into a four. And then everything after that would be a zero and I could just cut it off. So I'd end up with approximately 2.864. What about log base 5 of 2.9? So this would be equal to log of 2.9 over log of 5. So this would approximately be what? So my calculator gives me 0 0.661541. But again, if we're approximating this to three decimal places, well, then you've got one, two, three. So you're looking there. So the guy after is a five. So I can make this into a two, and then I can cut everything else off. So this is approximately 0 0.662. All right, now we're looking at log base four of 3.4. Let's go ahead and just use the natural logarithm. So let's do ln of 3.4 over ln of four. So what does this give us? Well, this would approximately be equal to, you've got 0.882767332. That's the readout I get from my calculator. So for three decimal places, I'm looking at that digit there. And so the seven here, the digit after, is in the category of five or greater. So I can go ahead and round up and say this is a three, and then I can cut everything else off. So this is approximately equal to 0 0.883. What about log base 2 of 23? What do we get there? So I can say this is log of 23 over log of 2. So this is going to be approximately equal to 4.523561956. So three decimal places right there, and then I'm looking at this digit here. This is in the category of five or greater. So I can round up, that three will become a four, and then I can cut everything else off. So this is approximately equal to 4.524. What about log base seven of 66? So let's say this is ln of 66 over ln of seven. So this will be approximately equal to, you'd have 2.1530, five, six, six, two, seven. So three decimal places, you're looking at this right here. The zero that comes after falls in the category of four or less. So we would leave the three unchanged and we would just cut everything off here. So your approximate answer would be 2.153. What about log base seven of 49? Well, most of us know that that's equal to two, but let's just for the sake of doing the example here, let's punch this up on a calculator. Let's go log of 49 over log of 7, and you'll see that you get an answer of 2 exactly. What about log base 2 of 64? So this is another one that we can get a perfect answer for. We know that 2 to the 6th power is 64. So for this one, punch up on your calculator ln of 64 over ln of 2, and you're going to find that you get an answer of exactly 6. All right, let's look at one that's a little bit challenging. So let's say you get log base two of negative one eighth. 
is negative one eighth allowed to be the argument of a logarithm? No, it is not. Remember, we say that this guy right here has to be greater than zero. Why is that the case? Think about this for a second. Two to the power of what would produce negative one eighth? You can't do it. If I raise two to a positive number, I get a positive number. So like two squared is four or two cubed is eight, so on and so forth. If I raise two to the power of zero, I get one. If I raise two to a negative number, so like negative four, it's one over two to the fourth power, which is still positive, right? This is one over 16. As this guy gets more and more negative, we're gonna get a value that's closer and closer to zero, but it will never actually become negative. So this right here is not a possibility for an argument in a logarithm. And so because of that, we can say this guy is undefined, right? We don't need to do a change of base rule. If we see something like this as a trap question, we just say it's undefined. What if we saw log base two of one eighth? Well, in this scenario, one eighth is positive, so we can get an answer here. We know that two to the power of negative three would give me one eighth, but again, for the sake of doing this, for this exercise, let's just go ahead and say this is log of one eighth over log of two. Punch that up on your calculator and you should get negative three as a result.